Hey, this is Tom, and over the past few weeks, Sri Lanka, whose economy was once held up as the success story for South Asia, came apart like a cheap sofa cushion. One of them you get in AliExpress. Now, it had lots of issues, including corruption, nepotism, bad financial planning, and a slew of policy mistakes. But the most glaring of them all was the ban on fertilizer, literally forcing the entire agricultural sector of Sri Lanka to go organic. A year later, the country's rice and tea industries were annihilated, taking out the lifeline out of this economy. Now, after months of protests, as the Prime Minister and the presidents of Sri Lanka, who are actually brothers, pretty much fled the country, the economy hit rock bottom. They defaulted on their debt, and they're literally running out out of the little fuel and food they have left, with no solution in sight. And somehow, this whole cluster freak of a situation was not warning enough for the European leaders because they're about to do the same thing this time in Europe. And in case you haven't heard, I'm talking about the farmers' protest in Netherlands. But hey, why should you care about some EU countries' policy mistakes, some farmers? I mean, we have our own problems. Who cares? Well, trust me, by the time I'm done with this, you will care and you will be alarmed by what I'm about to show you in this video. You see, the Netherlands is a tiny country in the European Union. You can literally fit it 270 times in the US, my guy. However, as tiny as it is, it is a massive player in the food industry. Think of it like the Ukraine of the European Union. It has the second largest agricultural experts in the entire freaking world. Basically, the Dutch are pretty much feeding the entire world and screwing with the system is a potential food crisis of epic proportions waiting to happen. Now, in recent weeks, farmers in the Netherlands have blocked off food distribution centers with hundreds of tractors. They blocked major roads, highways, and protested outside of local politicians' homes to protest a recent government decision. Now, ask yourself this question. Why, why are some of the most peaceful and polite farmers in Europe, freaking Dutch farmers, spent the entire past month barricading food distribution centers, roads, and bridges in the Netherlands? These are hardworking people who live a freaking hard life spending, giving up 30 days of work for this, that's a huge deal for every single one of them. And what about the regular Dutch people? Surely they are annoyed by this, right? When people block off roads and bridges and screw with your food supply, people tend to get angry, right? Well, not in this case. According to a recent poll, 45% of Dutch people fully support the farmers' protests. 25% are actually neutral, and only about a quarter of Dutch people do not support the protest. And yes, there's 4% who literally can't decide. So, how come so many Dutch farmers are risking it all to protest? And how come so many Dutch people are supporting this despite the personal cost to their own convenience? For that, we gotta go to square one. There are 4 million cattle, 13 million pigs, 104 million chickens, and over 17 million Dutch people living in the Netherlands a quarter of the population of countries like France or Germany. But, as I mentioned before, despite its modest population size, it is Europe's biggest meat exporter, with EU's highest density of livestock. And you see, the problem is that intensive agriculture, especially with livestock, creates lots of nitrogen oxides and nitrous oxide. Now, I initially thought that those are some pills kids take today to party, but... No, that's Oxy. That's the company Warren Buffett invested in. And though I don't understand why Warren Buffett is investing in a recreational drug company, but that sent me on a whole new rabbit hole of another affiliate video about the back rooms, and that is a story for a whole other video. Now, I then decided to call Dr. Seth from Everything Money since he has a PhD in chemistry, but since I don't have his number, ended up getting picked up by Paul, and we buried the hatchet, but then I realized he was completely confused and he thought I was Jeremy, but I digress. So I had to do some actual research, and I realized that holy mother of Post Malone, manure is not always a good thing. 
And basically, when you mix manure with urine, you get ammonia, which is a nitrogen compound. And then when that enters lakes and streams via farm runoff, well, that nitrogen can damage the environment pretty much. And here's the thing. The Netherlands is Europe's biggest meat exporter. And it has the seventh biggest livestock population in the EU, despite what I just told you, despite the very small geographic size. How small, you ask? 16,000 square miles. That's not even the top 30 countries in Europe, actually ranked 32 behind Estonia and Slovakia. Now, this means that the Netherlands has Europe's highest livestock density with insufficient land to handle all this waste from the cattle, not to mention chickens, pigs, and Dutch people. So the Netherlands pretty much has a gas problem, and the government is basically trying to ruin the agricultural sector to solve it. Now, that might not be the smartest decision, just ask Sri Lanka how it went when they banned fertilizer to be more environmentally friendly. You see, environmental concerns are simply not that important when you ain't got shit to eat. Beyond the fact that it is morally wrong, over the course of the past few decades, the Dutch government actually encouraged capacity increase by farmers. They wanted more livestock for decades. They literally got farmers to hawk their life savings trying to do just that. Now, Dutch farmers were invested in the hundreds of millions in equipment and technology to do what their government asked them to, which is increase capacity of livestock. And now they're getting the rug pulled underneath them by the same government by demanding a livestock reduction that would literally bankrupt most of them because all of the freaking loans they had to take to scale the same industry their government no longer wants. Now look, I don't think ESG is evil by nature. I do think that trying to create a sustainable earth is a good thing. However, pushing it down our throat before it's actually ready, before it actually works at scale, before it can replace what we currently have, our current system, is a boneheaded move. As far as the Netherlands protests, it is basically about nitrogen reduction at the core. And it's a noble goal indeed, but you know, it's one that's being forced by the government without any proper alternative. That's the crazy part. They're trying to get it done super, super, super fast by reducing livestock in the Netherlands called Turkey instead of letting the agriculture industry slowly innovate their way out of the shit and into a nitrogen-reduced operations. Now, this is a disaster waiting to happen. I mean, what's the plan here, guys? Kill the agriculture industry and the Netherlands so we can get a better ESG score? And then what? What are we going to eat, my guy? It is so moronic, it almost feels like somebody is intentionally trying to fuck shit up on purpose. But they wouldn't do that, right? <laughs> <laughs>